情是。Better when we're sober, but it's not as much fun, so we get drunk. I'm a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a journalist? I've always been a journalist. Yeah. My lyrics are are are, are yeah, always. Yeah, you know, people go on about my lyrics, and all I do is I'm a journalist. You know, what I say. You know. Shane McGowan is a legend in modern Irish history. This video is intended as a sort of a tribute and will be a compilation of some of his most iconic moments. But first, a brief bit of context for my viewers who are maybe not as familiar with him. Born in 1957, Shane McGowan is an Irish singer-songwriter famous for his poetic wit and off-stage antics. He's most well known for forming the band The Pogues, in which he combined his love of punk rock with traditional Irish music, creating a sound which was both unique and energetic. On top of that, he wrote some truly poetic lyrics which could be sad, funny or downright gruesome, but always entertaining. The rest of the band would kick him out of the Pogues for his behaviour, however, and while he's had a long run dipping in and out of music, he's always been known to be somewhat troublesome. His severe drinking problems and hard drug use have led to some interesting appearances and sadly a decline in his health. Loath as I am to compare him to anyone else, for my international audience, Shane McGowan is sort of like an Irish Ozzy Osbourne or Lemmy. I suspect he may have been the inspiration for Cassidy in Preacher. Everybody knows Bono, but over here we actually like Shane McGowan, and I think you will too. So allow me to present to you creative genius and debauchee, Shane McGowan. This very public row between you and Sinead O'Connor, and you two were pretty good friends, weren't you? No, I didn't like her anyway. You never liked her? <laughs> the travelling depends. If you travel right, the right way, if you can get it together, like with Bass or, and Bob, if you can get that together. But with American stuff, you have to use planes. I hate planes. You know? Fear of flying? No, no. They just treat me like a piece of... <laughs> <laughs> they really do, do they? When you check in, they kind of spit to one side and then... No, they spit straight at me. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. And they all look very happy in the morn. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. And they all look very happy in the morn. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. And they all look very happy in the morn. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. And they all look very happy in the morn. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. And they all look very happy in the morn. But you meet the night, I'm on a bed in the pub where I was born. We play it from the night until a peaceful early morn. We still the slow cycles and the men I had the horn. Hi Tommy. Hi Shane, my name is Luke. Pleased to meet you. Great concert. You can sit down. Okay. I don't want to sit down. You're, you're Shane, yeah. why did it take so long to pop the question? I've been popping the question for quite a while and so has she, but hmm. never, never seemed at the same time. No, I, <laughs> I, I asked him first. You asked him first. Hmm. And did you do the traditional thing, wait for leap year and... I went down on one knee. Yeah. And I had the ring, yeah. didn't I? 
Yes, all kinds of things I did. And he threw it at me. I <laughs> really thought about the teeth when he would laugh because his laugh was, you know. All right, good stuff, Jay. Thanks very much. Have a good night. Good luck. Good rest, Jay. <laughs> You're proud to be born in Ireland? Yeah. You're proud I'm to be proud Irish? Irish? I'm proud to be Irish, yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're the master, right? Why? Welcome to the Late Late Show. It's good to see you. I've been in here before. I know, but welcome back. Before you. Have <laughs> That's true. Welcome back. Are there some days that you are sober? Or you drink all, all days? Or? I drink all day, every day, all night, every night. Yeah? Oh. By the way, can I ask you, were you a Hellraiser in your time? Never, no. no. I just had a good time, like Shane. <laughs> 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 Shane McGowan of the Pogues are undoubtedly best known for one song, 1987's Fairy Tale of New York. It's a Christmas song, and in Ireland and the UK, it's one of the best known, and often regarded as just the best, Christmas song. Everybody here knows this song, even if most couldn't name a single other song by the Pogues. When this song comes on at the pubs at Christmas here, everyone starts to sing. So why is it so good? Well, it's not really like any other Christmas song. While most others are about snow or reindeer or gifts, Fairy Tale of New York is kind of depressing. Although I wouldn't say it's cynical, it's actually kind of hopeful. At the beginning it'll bum you out, but by the end you're uplifted and joyful. If you've had a couple of drinks, it's impossible to resist singing along. The song has seen some controversy over the years, and every Christmas it's the centre of debate over some of the lyrics which are deemed offensive. Some radio DJs refuse to play it because of this, others make a point of playing it because of this. It's been censored and uncensored, and every year it seems we hear more discourse about the song than we actually hear the fucking song itself. If you don't know the song, you might be wondering, what kind of fucking Christmas song is this? The song centres around a conversation held between a couple in New York, who are arguing about their broken dreams, essentially. This argument becomes quite heated, and some of the lyrics reflect that. So you can probably see why some people are up in arms over the song's lyrics. Personally, I think it's a bit silly. The words are from the perspectives of two characters, not the performers. If the same scene played out in a movie, I doubt anyone would have any problem with it. Well, in 2020, Bon Jovi decided he liked the song so much he'd do a cover version. He also decided he didn't need the stink of the controversial lyrics, so he just rewrote that part of the song. You're a bum, you're a braggart, you've lost all your swagger, and the word around town is you ain't much in bed. You're a squirrel cause you're nuts, you're a kick in the gut, happy Christmas my arse, I'll be glad it's our last. There you have it folks, you're a squirrel cause you're nuts. He took a song that some found offensive and made it offensive to everybody. Bon Jovi, officially outclassed by this man. You drinking water right now? No, it's gin. Oh, gin. You like gin? I love gin. Yeah. I hold you, I hold you, I hold you. Shane, when I hear you singing... I met, I met, I yeah. met, I met, okay, my, next to I met uh, the nurse that I was madly in love with in my first madhouse. Yeah? You were in love with the nurse? 
in yes, the bath. Yes, in the madhouse. In the madhouse. They were, yeah, nurses weren't allowed to screw in nutters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's operating on, on two engines when he has four. He's genius when he's completely fucked up. Imagine how much more genius he would be if he wasn't, you know what I mean? So that's the main kind of feeling I'm left with. Or if somebody said to me, what, what, what would you say is that, is that, that um, I hope he doesn't um, smash himself entirely, you know what I mean? Because uh, it is a very incredible beauty that he does have. And you're very welcome. And thanks for yeah, being with us. Great thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You made your way across you. the Atlantic Ocean to be here tonight, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely... You probably got a plane. Well, I, I, I didn't... Watch out for the step. <laughs> Watch out. Okay, one. Okay, the camera is... <laughs> the interview is over, Shane. The interview is over. As we had a look in a room where that dead man lay Something Jim's wire made his last trip To the land where his father's lay And fifteen minutes later we had our first face of whiskey There's no good giving lectures in action or in history The man who started telling jokes, the women they got pissed the boy was looking at him in every bastard day was pissed He was the same So you see your eyes was brown and empty eye Come out and then it's out and you have to go and say I was free for a man and then you were slain He fucked a chunk and kids for him, he slashed him to the ground When he took on fire, he turned out and all he went one round He never had no time for rights for drink or dodge or hold Never to apply when the fire was right, so they sent him to the war. Well, he will! Gone away, there's nothing left inside. The grouchy tower, there we go, I lost another pay. The calling of the rosary, and his wife will fire away. I'm a freeborn man of the USA. Three ball coats. It's a bit of a surprise that we're that popular. And, you know, it's great. You know, we're singing in a different language and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it says a lot for the French sense of taste. Sense of humour. By the way, round of applause for our wonderful performers here, friends, all well known faces, all good eggs. Thanks, guys. You've been great. You've been great. All right, after the break, ladies and gentlemen, the one you've all been... Say their names, isn't it? Yes. Say their names? Yes. yes. One after another. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll do it during the break, Shane. <laughs> after the break. And in the back of the bar, there was a table set up, and there was a group having dinner. And the group was Sinead O'Connor, Van Morrison, Ronnie Wood, and Shane McGowan. What a group. That's and like a super I group. I thought, like, yeah, that, that's something you're never going to see. And I knew Ronnie Wood. And yeah. so he invited me up to say hello. And I introduced myself and I said hello. And I couldn't help but notice, this is how we start our conversation, that Sinead O'Connor was drinking milk. Well, good honor. And everybody else was not. <laughs> and I sat down and then the, you know, the cardinal mistake of politics and, ah. and the history of politics was started being discussed. And Shane McGowan, who I did not know, uh, he and I did not share a similar view on the history of Scotland. Huh. And before you know it, the two of us were fighting and we were rolling around on the floor and I remember Van Morrison laughing 
And I won't get into the fight that yes. much, but it ended. Yes. And I got up and I said, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed, I'm very sorry, and I walked away. And Shane McGowan at that time had a cast on his right arm that looked as well lived in as anything I've ever seen. <laughs> And he did not have a lot of teeth <laughs> no, at the no, time either. No, no, that's changed since yet. So fighting just seemed unfair. So I excused <laughs> myself and I, I went to the bar and I had a drink. And, and about three hours later, the bar's almost empty. Everybody's gone. And I get a tap on the shoulder. And it's Shane McGowan. And he says, oi, I need a place to stay. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. Three hours ago, we were fighting on the floor. He said, that was three hours ago. Now I need a place to stay. <laughs> and I said, well, what about your mates? And he said, they're gone. And I was so kind of impressed with his directness that I said, well, do you want a drink? And he said, sure. So we sat and I had like the that. last drink, walked back to my hotel. Uh, I got out a bunch of blankets and I made a bed for him on the couch and a pillow and he went to sleep and I went to sleep and I got up in the morning expecting him to still be there because it was quite early. And all the blankets were perfectly folded. You couldn't have done it better. The pillow was on top of the blankets. And Whoa. as I looked over to the desk, there was a note that he had written on the hotel stationery. And it was the most beautiful letter I'd ever read. Really? Uh, it was like poetry. And it was just a thank you note. It, but it was so generous and uh, the things he had to say about me and our night and yeah. humanity. And, and it was quite long. Yes. Uh, and I've still got this letter to this what day because it changed my perspective. I can imagine. Uh, don't judge a book by its cover and yeah. very rarely trust first encounters. Yeah.